Now, if you want a recommendation about where you want to stay in Belgrade when you come here, just go for Belgrade City Centre. I mean, you've been walking distance from like Tesla's Museum, St. Sava Church, St. Mark's Orthodox Church, Parliament of Serbia, for the fortress, you know. I just don't, no offense to Novi Belgrade, I just don't go to Novi Belgrade or Zemu because they're, they seem really far away from all the main action. I mean, it's nice, you know, to walk from Belgrade to Zemu. It's seven kilometers each way, but it's a good, decent walk. Yeah. So I'll take a quick walk past St. Mark's Cathedral on the way to the fortress. Yes. Nice autumn day, leaves are falling, still cold, tramps coming by, Serbia's open. Here we are walking across the Kale Megdag. See, how you say it well is like say Kale, like Megs and Megan, and Dag. Kalmadag. Kalmadag Fortress, yes. It's the one of the many entrances to get into this big park, fortress, whatever you want to call it. So, let's begin. Yep, here we are. We're in. I'm so glad I've actually came back here because I was here, let me think, about two weeks ago, yes, and I did a vlog here, but um, because I stupidly mixed my OnlyFans video with this vlog, I decided to get rid of it, and plus I filmed it at night, and it's not really fun walking around here at night when it's like pitch dark, and you can't really see the beauty of certain aspects of a fortress. Now this part of the park is filled with busts of many famous Serbians from like the 19th and the 20th century. So here we have a recent person who only died 13 years ago. Here's another famous man who's been gone for under 50 years. But he was very important in the times of Serbia and Yugoslavia. Another hero of Serbia died in 1943. World War II casualty, I guess. We've got someone from who died in 1878. So this person was very important in the Serbian uprising uh, in the middle late of the 19th century. We've got this um, kind of like a harp. Mm. This is one statue I can't remember seeing five years ago, and I probably haven't seen it recently. And the good part about it is it's, it's facing the fortress. Yep, it's definitely got something to French. Uh, it's the Monument of Gratitude to France. It's the honor of those French who were involved in World War I, and, uh, and how like you know, good ties between France and Serbia or Yugoslavia back in the day. Yeah. Um, so, I think, yeah, like this is the Monument de Vicencien of the France, uh, and then there's other statues around here, um, yeah. That one. Yeah, so at the base of the statue, it's to commemorate those French who fought for Serbia in 1914-1918 World War One. See, this is what you gotta to come to Belgrade for. This amazing fortress. It's free entry, but the museums will cost you a few hundred dinner, but it's worth it. Turkish Hazel. I guess why the Turks are really in love with the hazelnuts. They're so nice, but they really got too much fat. And... Actually, like, why do the hazelnuts even like grow on a tree? Someone let me know. And another war memorial right here which has some fresh flowers from Armistice Day. See, all the way down this road, leading up towards the French Embassy back there, they have various plaques 
and banners of information about like Belgrade itself. I mean, look, look, this painting is pretty old. This man's loosely against French Slavists has published extension Slavic history. You know, he was a dedicated to um, uh, like Slavic culture. And actually, this is like the, the Pasha that was the Ottoman at the time residence. He, like he lived like in this like fortress, and after that, abandoned a mosque on the hill, the foot of which vanished. Such the waves of the south from the Geneva White House is the young capital built. Right, so you gotta look this guy up if you're really interested in this man. It is such a really foggy day here in Belgrade. Winter is coming. Yes, winter is coming soon, Martin. But the sun is still out. And this thing here is something I don't think I've seen in my entire times here in Belgrade. I think the, these people here are like, they died like maybe in World War II because uh, they've got like a, a star on top of the grave. Um, yes, in 1942, uh, 1929, um, let's see, oh, so inner war people, uh, 1943, 1957. These people, like, buried here, I'm guessing they would have been, like, generals in the Yugoslav army or Serbian army, at some point, like, national heroes, or, like, they probably died tragically in some way, in other, like, really, there should be a good guidebook for this fortress, because, you know, the average person who is from outside the Balkans, uh, or has never been to Serbia, would have like no idea about these events. I mean, yeah, you'd learn in like World War One that uh, that the war was started thanks to a Bosnian Serb assassinating Franz Ferdinand in Bosnia in Sarajevo, and then we realized in World War Two the Yugoslav monarchy was overthrown when the other Germans and the Hungarians and the Italians came in. Yeah. So anyway, it's quite iconic that you have four people buried here at the foot of the fortress. And what a spot to be standing at the fortress. See the Sava River coming along here, on this way, and then like at the corner near that island, that is the Danube River. Yeah, so that river is flowing from Germany all the way to the Black Sea, and this river, I think it's coming from like Hmm, I think where would it be coming from? Yeah, I think probably maybe Croatia or Bosnia, like well, one of the two. I haven't really looked that up. I don't really tend to focus on the, on the Danube because literally if you do a Danube cruise, you are bound to stop in like Belgrade after Budapest. I'm getting really close to entering the fortress and like that man is about to do, he's going to go through here and then to get up there should be a short staircase. Now, entering the fortress. Iron class doors, you know. Spikes on them. Stop invaders getting in. I never had no idea, like, a lot of people in Belgrade have dogs. Same goes like London. Um, I, I literally never really saw any dogs when I lived in Sweden a few years ago. Uh, yeah, oh, right here. Roman well, 1717, 1731. Like that. And here we are. We are on the plateau by the Victor Monument. Just right up there. With his backside facing towards the rest of Serbia. Like his backside facing the rest of the Ottoman Empire. And his front side facing towards the Hungarian Empire. Yeah. The walk up here is well worth it. Because, you know, you've got all the good views of Belgrade, you've got the good views of the Saba River, and you've got the good views of the Danube when they meet together.
Man, that monument is just so tall. They're doing a lot of construction around this area. Like, not far from the Culture Museum, it's right next to it. So, the smell of the soil it smells a bit like chilies. Kind of like somebody's growing chilies on this grounds, I'll tell you why. I feel like eating something spicy today. Maybe I'll put extra chili in my chivap when I go for lunch soon at my usual eating place. The park of the fortress, we have the tomb of an Ottoman Empire. Dalmat al Pasa Turbasi. Uh, yes, the museum. He was one of the few Turkish buildings still preserved in Belgrade. It was erected in 1784. Over the grave of Izzy Mehmed Pasha, who died here serving as the governor of Belgrade. The Tibet was damaged during the first Serbian uprising and renovated in 1819 by Vali Mashali Al Pasha to commemorate the Dam Mat Al Pasha. This famous military commander died in the 1716 Battle of Petrovandi. He was buried by the mosque of Sultan Suleiman in the upper town, but a few years later, both the mosque and the grave were destroyed by the Austrians. In the middle of the 19th century, another two governors of Belgrade were buried at the mausoleum. It was renovated before World War II when the old gravestone of Delmat al Pash was found and placed there again. The mausoleum has borne his name ever since. So it's always going to be closed like this. And um, it's got its name and writing in Ottoman Arabic script because uh, the Turkish language wasn't really invented until uh, Ataturk came to power. We have a treaty on the Turkish government. We're taking care of this building, this mausoleum. And it looks so nice in the daylight when you look inside because it's got a really old tombstone and a really beautiful cloth with the you know, famous, uh, what do you call it? Mm. It's like, it's like the creed of Islam, like there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. You see, if you had came here in the night, you would not be able to really see the insides of it properly. Like I was here two weeks ago at night, and I had no idea there was really like nice cloth covering the tomb. And what a really good tall Ottoman era like tombstone. Good sights of Belgrade. Do you believe there's a truck that wants to come inside here? It's weird. But I better get out of the way, otherwise it's gonna get run over. <laughs> and yep, we're now in the military part of the fortress. There are so much of uh, Yugoslav arms here from the both world wars and all. Siren here could do a little bit of a, an upgrade. I mean, literally, if you had like a sheet of glass, um, it wouldn't fade away after time. Oh look, and there's another like uh, go-kart coming around here. Hmm. Oh, here we are. Wow. Look at all these military weapons. I reckon these are probably like post World War II, I reckon. Uh, oh, wait, it doesn't really say it. Like, please not climb on the museum items. Okay, fair enough. Oh, wait, here, here, there's a plot. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Panzer, Panzer Kampfwagen. Yeah, 
Like a German tank, I guess. Or maybe Austrian tank. More tanks right here. Right, that's another smaller tank, I guess. And more tanks, but bigger size tanks right here in the background. Anti-aircraft missile. Oh, and this is like the mother of all. Walking in this area, you risk your life. Yep, that's why they got a fence right here. Because literally, you know, you, it's nothing stopping you from walking down this path and either slipping and falling off that edge. Safety first. Ah, there it is. The first Serbian coat of arms. And the flag of Belgrade flying up above. Don't know how I'm going to get like up there, I guess. Hopefully I don't have to pay any more money. So anyway, this little part here, which is like just the dinosaur park, it's just closed off to the public. They're refurbishing it. I mean, literally, I don't understand why they put dinosaurs here. Don't think they ever had much of a presence in Belgrade, I guess. But then, you never know, somebody could have dug up dinosaur bo bones in this country many years ago. And then, you got a good exhibition. I just like walked around the whole perimeter and I can't literally find a way to get into that fortress up there. I think there's like too much construction going on right now, which you basically have to like limit where you can like look around. So it's a, it's a shame, but as far as I remember, I was actually here 2015 in August. I'm um, 100% certain I did go inside that fortress, but then, you know, memory is always fading away unless you have photography. See, so, look, we got a big digger out in the grounds, digging holes, yeah. Well, we're gonna plant like more trees, I guess. Despot Gate, built 1404-1427. Man, this is so old too. Just leaving behind the iconic gates of the fortress. 1415, you know? So old. Please be careful, stones may slide from gate or vault. Yes, so I'm coming through the back entrance. So like, there's this guy right behind me, and he's like, uh, Serbska, in, like English, he's like, uh, and he's trying to give me this like pamphlet. And uh, you know, the thing is, well, I try to give you pamphlets, I really want money out of you. And he's like, well, where are you from? Like Turkish? I'm like, do I even look Turkish to you? Do I even sound Turkish? Do I even know a word of Turkish? No. So he's probably just, you know, one of his. Millions of disadvantaged people who have to do things like that to make a living. And it's really sad. So, um, literally, uh, there are better things to do in life rather than pester people for, like me for money. And that is shoe shining. Good job. So after leaving behind the fortified walls of the fortress, you get back to reality. You get back to the green life. You get back to the parks. And, you know, it's just so much more quiet. Here. Yeah. Except for the noisy children, though. Yeah. So anyway, you know, 
Belgrade Fortress. It's open 365 days a year, but um, some of the museums are closed on Mondays as usual. But then, to make the most out of your time here, you best to come here between sunrise and sunset. Like, don't be coming here in winter at 4 p.m. It's too dark. You best to come here around at least lunchtime. Not that many people, I guess. But, as they always say, Serbia is open, as usual. Mate, this is too hilarious not to include in the vlog today. They put a mask on it. You might as well put a mask on all the funny statues around this park. Because, you know, after all, we are in a pandemic. Well, I'm on the very edge of the Belgrade Fortress. And I'm just about to leave. So I hope you had a good time looking around the fortress with me. And maybe one day you'll like to come to Belgrade and see it for your own eyes. Anyway, overland metalhead over and out.